begin the There you go. All right. I'd like to begin talking about the 50s by saying the 50s was probably the second worst decade of all time for comics. Let's start with how well they did at the beginning of the 50s. Superheroes were a dying breed a little bit and you have these genres popping up. Really good ones. Horror, crime, westerns, romance. Like, superheroes was still in the background, but not so much. National Allied uh, was doing good. Superman and Batman were doing good. Wonder Woman was a new creation from the 40s that was doing well. Like, all the... However, certain things weren't exactly going right. Like, it was... But you had quality comics. You had Dell uh, Publishing. You had... Timely, if not Atlas, you had MLJ still going with Archie and uh, Red Circle characters. Well, what could possibly happen to make that go away? Enter Frederick Wortham. He wrote a book called Seduction of the Innocent, which was a pop psychology book. However, as a criticism of comics, it is worth noting. And I actually have a slight copy. Uh, bear with me here, I just gotta find it, folks. Slight. Hold on. Every time I read this, my eyes kind of burn out of my head. Comic books. Blueprints for delinquency. I can't afford an actual copy of Seduction of the Innocent because it costs a thousand dollars. However, if we bear with this digested version of it, let's go. It starts off with Willie. Police uh, on July. On a, one July day in 1950, during a baseball game at New York's Polo Grounds, a middle-aged spectator in the bleachers suddenly slumped over, blood pouring from his head. He was carried from the stands and died soon afterwards, the victim of a 45 caliber bullet, apparently fired at random from one of the neighboring apartment houses. Police searched all the nearby buildings, finally arrested a 14-year-old boy named Willie, described by the newspapers as gun-happy. In the apartment where Willie lived with his aunt, the police found two 22 rifles, and a high-powered 22 target pistol. The boy also confessed to owning and firing a 45 pistol. In court, the judge said, We cannot find you guilty, but I believe you to be guilty. With this statement, he committed Willie to the state reformatory for an indeterminate stay. Editorials blamed the boy's aunt, reproached for her being irresponsible in training the youngster. But was she? Investigation revealed that Willie had been a rabid comic book reader. His aunt had become alarmed and forbidden to bring such books into the house. But the flood continued. Moreover, workers at a public gu child guidance agency assured the aunt that she could get, let Willie read all of them if he wanted. Some of Willie's books are before me as I write. Smudgily printed and well-thumbed, they are abashed chronicles of violence and sex. As a critic, you have to take his words with a grain of salt, but you have to look at them because it is a valid criticism. There were practices going on at the distribution level. There were storytelling devices that were uh, exploitative, but boy, did he really mess things up. Wortham was appointed as investigator by Estes Kefauver, and Kefauver eventually held hearings about the link between juvenile delinquency and comic books. Now, juvenile delinquency was at an all-time low in the 1950s. However, because of numbers that Wortham made and senators made, they could make it appear that comic books and 
delinquency were interrelated. Testimony by Wortham, and it had testimony by one William Gaines. William Gaines was the publisher of EC Comics. It was the pub It published Two Fisted Tales. It published uh, Tales from the Crypt. It published so many good uh, books, and the books were gory, like. William Gaines was asked by uh, one committee member, what do you think governs you? And William Gaines, now I'm paraphrasing this by the way, says, I do it in good taste. My good taste. And the committee member brings up a comic where a woman's body is lying on the floor and a man holding uh, a head by the hair and a bloody axe. Now, mind you, an intelligent person sees that the head is severed from the body, even though it's not shown that it's severed from the body. The committee member says, this is horrific. Are you sure that this is in good taste? And William Gaines says, yes, for a horror comic, that is in good taste. However, William Gaines did not mention, however, that an original uh, idea for that cover actually had the head raised several inches so that you could see the severing. They had X'd out that idea. But the committee eventually did what it was meant to do. It got people elected based on the fear-mongering of parents. The committee made no resolution. It did not find anything. It was inconclusive. However, a fire got started and the first thing that happened was the Country's Magazine Association put together the Comics Code Authority. The Comics Code Authority was a regulation system that publishers did not have to uh, submit to. Publishers did not have to submit to the Comics Code. However, if they wanted to get their books distributed by the distributors that were being boycotted by parents, they had to have that Comics Code Authority stamp on it so that distributors could say to women, because it was the majority of it of the protesters were women, it was mothers that were against comics at the time. These mothers had to be shown that steps were taking that there was a self-regulation. So the self-regulation was this comics code authority stamp where they had to abide by certain rules. Now, a smart person would say the comics code would make it less stringent, make it so that certain things would be easy going. No, they don't do that. Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce the audience to another country, Japan. Japan started its, um, shall we say, comics industry early on with magazines like Japan Punch by Charles Bergman and a French cartoonist also uh, had a hand in early Japan with uh, Tobei, which was, his name was George Burrow. Now, Japanese manga was has its roots as far back as Hokusai Ukiyo paintings. Now, in the, however, in the 1950s, the Americans rewrote uh, the Constitution for 
Japan. And what happens there becomes there's a certain part of the Constitution saying that the government shall not censor anything. There is no government censorship. Combined with the the different history, the different evolution of culture in Japan as to, say, America or even other Western nations, the products of the Japanese manga industry are numerous. You have shonen manga for boys, you have shoujo manga for girls, you have seinen manga, which is an evolution of gekiga, which is dramatic pictures. You have Fujiyoshis, you have otakus, you have these different styles of storytelling that are just worlds apart from other countries' uh, developments. Then you have the fact that everybody in Japan reads manga. And I mean everybody. There has not been a witch hunt in manga that Americans have had. Um, salarymen, housewives, people on the train can read manga. Like, there are manga vending machines uh, that have these telephone book size magazines. The biggest difference, I would say, in manga and comics is that the distribution of product is that manga comes in mostly anthologies the size of telephone books. These telephone books need to be run or, and edited and administrated with intense uh, detail because if one person is late, like that means that there's about 16 to 20 pages missing in these telephone books and it makes things a lot harder as opposed to Americans who can be very comfortable with lateness the books in America can just sit on the shelf or sit uh, idly by and be months at a time late. Whereas in Japan, where a country that values efficiency very highly, this is uh, almost unheard of. And because of these uh, openness to new ideas and whatnot, there is almost no underground comics in Japan as opposed to, say, America or the Western countries. Like, there are a multitude of publishers that will take the works. With evolving technology in printing and cartooning, animation, uh, manga has become one of the premier uh, comic book formats in the world, mainly due to its uh, two-point attack in print and in film and television. While very different from each other, American comics and Japanese manga have evolved into the point where they could be cousins of each other.